All right, what's going on? Coming to you live again with the last part of quarantine marketing so you can be keep winning while you're whining about the lockdown. And ultimately, it's about, you know, keep moving forward. Even if you're stuck in the house, you're not getting the same uh, human connections that you're getting from your office and this kind of thing, right? So I'm gonna give you the last three ideas today and appreciate you for tuning in live. What's up, Nathan? And um, all right, so check it out. Here's basically the last three tips for quarantine marketing. So if you're stuck in your house, you, you're still looking to how can you move your business forward? How can you keep progressing? This is the last part. Do me a favor if you're on the live right now, drop me a hashtag live. Later on, if you're catching the replay, drop me a hashtag replay. Appreciate that. Yeah, if you're, check out my, my friend Chris Griffith's group, Vetted VA. Definitely recommend, definitely recommend them. What's up, mom? Okay, so, and I got the thing, you can see I still have it where I can read your comments and I have it backwards. So thanks to Carlos for that awesome tip. Appreciate that. Definitely, definitely was helpful. Okay, number 10 is audit. All right, so right now it's a time that you can be auditing your business, okay? So what should you, what should you actually be auditing, okay? Can't see you all, yeah. You can see that vetted VA sticker though. Um, all right, so number 10 on audit, right? What should you be auditing, okay? So number one is you should be auditing your time, okay? So you can be looking at where are you normally spending your time in your business and is that the highest and best use of your time, right? It could be where maybe you're getting bogged down in some basic things that if you just hired a virtual assistant or hired an in-office assistant or got a loan partner, Right? There could be some opportunity where, you know, oftentimes you're just one hire away from maybe a completely different business, right? And if you audit where your time is being spent right now, um, where your energy is going, maybe there's some better places for it to go, right? So be auditing your time, okay? Um, number two is your money, all right? So obviously that's, a, you know, seems to be pretty standard in terms of an audit, right? But be looking at your money, okay? Look at your iPhone or, or Google Play Store subscriptions. Um, you know, be looking at just your overall business expenses. Maybe, you know, do you have random, like, like I probably needed to do this for myself this week because there's probably a bunch of little random softwares and stuff that we don't use that we're paying three, four, five hundred, a thousand dollars a month for, something like that, right? Um, that we could, we could cut out. So we're going to be looking at all that kind of stuff in terms of, in terms of money. Um, and then also, you know, is, is looking at your team, right? So a lot of times people don't think about, well, let me audit my team and, and looking at the team that's around you. Do you have, do you have superstars around you, right? Um, can you have addition through subtraction? And again, I'm not saying that you should be like out to fire people right now. That's not, that's not at all my goal or my intention. I'm just suggesting looking at your team that's around you, right? Do you have the team that you need? Do you have the support system that you need? Do you have the some kind of structure. Do you have, who's your tribe, right? What tribe do you have around you today that you're able to go to for support, for help, when you need when you need help, when you wanna brag on your wins, right? Do you have a tribe like that around you right now? If you need a tribe around you, check out oneagentaway.com. You can see what we're doing inside of the Legion and you know, I would love to be part of that tribe to, to support you in your business. But looking at, looking at your time, where's your time going today? Are you getting the highest and best use out of the time that you put into your business. And again, I'm, I'm not coming suggesting, oh, you should be working 16 hours a day on your business. Obviously there are some people that are doing that, but I'm just saying that are you looking at the time that you're actually putting in, are you getting the highest and best use out of the time that you are putting in, right? And then um, again, just checking out your money situation, making sure that just looking at what expenses you have. And really the thing that I'm looking at right now is like, recurring charges, right? What recurring stuff do you have set up through Google, iTunes stores, different softwares, and just random accounts that all just charge your bank every month? I'm looking at all that kind of stuff just to, just to get an idea of what's going on, right? And then looking at the team around you. Do you have winners? Um, do you have winners surrounding you, right? Is the team, are your subordinates below you? Are they the best people that should be on your team right now? Is there somebody else that you could hire that would make a huge impact in your business, right? Maybe there's somebody that, if you're a solo person, maybe hiring a, getting a loan partner, having somebody like that, having a marketing agency working with you, having the right tribe around you. These are all things that you can be looking at with your, in terms of your team 
and making sure that you have the best team around you to support you and making sure that you're progressing forward, right? All right, so making sure that you audit, audit your business. Let me ask you guys this. I mean, when's the last time you audited your business or have you already d done any of this since, you know, within the last couple of weeks since people, you know, obviously the, the lockdown, quarantine has been rolling in different areas in different times. And, uh, you know, are you auditing your business right now? All right, so, so that's number 10, right? Number 11 is, um, number 11 is looking at a, is looking at a new platform. When you say it's frozen, uh, well, hopefully it'll come back. Number 11 is looking at a new platform, okay? So obviously, you know, right now we're on Facebook and, and this is one platform, but there's a lot of platforms that are out there, right? Between Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, TikTok, LinkedIn, all these different types of platforms. And maybe it's the time that you could be putting in 30 minutes a day or one hour a day in order to try to learn a new platform, right? Maybe it's the time where you can actually figure out a new platform. Instead of being a lurker on a new platform, you can actually be a content creator, right? Um, maybe, you know, TikTok would maybe be a great example of that or LinkedIn. It's, it's kind of strange now that people are hanging out on LinkedIn, right? I'm not, I still feel like I'm not used to that, but ultimately people are doing that now. It's, they're kind of changing that platform a little bit, making it slightly more social. And if you create content on LinkedIn, you have a really good chance of getting a lot of eyeballs on your content because people are there reading content, people are there to learn, and it's all, you know, everybody's there for business kind of a feeling. And so having, having good content on LinkedIn is pretty cool. The other thing is like, you know, if you need to check out some people on, um, on TikTok, I'll post some links to different people on TikTok after I get off the live and you can check them out. Some people that I think are doing a pretty good, pretty good job on, on TikTok in terms of mortgage and, and real estate related people. And you can see what, what they're doing. But maybe it's a time, you know, take 30 minutes a day and really, really just dive into a new platform, right? I mean, there's probably some, you probably have some different social apps on your phone that you're just a lurker on, right? You're just there every once in a while scrolling through, looking at the content, but not actually creating your own content. So how can you take this time right now and every single day, you know, dive into one specific platform and actually become a content creator on that platform instead of just being, you know, just being a lurker, right? Ultimately, if you're just lurking in the background, you're not going to get the same value out of the out of a platform as if you're actually there creating content, being part of the value, being part of the topic, the conversation, that kind of thing, right? If you're just hanging out watching, just being an observer, you're not gonna, you'll, you'll never get the same value out of it. So ultimately you gotta, you gotta just go in and actually create content. So once you're watching what other people are doing, eventually just follow their, follow their lead, right? Follow their, you know, you're gonna see people in, in every platform, there's different structures that work, there's different, you know, you can see, you can watch what's working and then just kind of be inspired by what's already working for other people and do something in your own way, but you know, by being inspired by what they're doing. So that way you're not trying to just start from scratch. It's like, just go out and look at what people are doing that's already working and then just kind of mimic that, right? I'll give you an example. One time I saw an article, I saw an article from Forbes magazine or from Car and Truck magazine or something like that. And it was called uh, Seven Cars to Avoid in 2019, right? And I was like, man, that's like, you know, it was really, um, there was a lot of fear of missing out or, you know, it was like, man, you really wanted to click into that article. And so I used that same concept of, you know, things to avoid. And I made a blog post called seven reasons realtors hate loan officers and maybe even you. Right. And that blog post was my most shared blog I ever had. It got like a hundred thousand views because it was getting shared in realtor groups and loan officer groups and all over the place. And people, it's a, such a curiosity peaker, right? Now, I didn't even just come up with that concept on my own. I saw a concept that was working for somebody else in a totally different industry, and I just mimicked what was working for them because that article had, I don't know, like 50,000 shares or something on it, you know, on Facebook. And so I was like, okay, well, obviously this is a really a curiosity peaker. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of copy what they're doing, and I'm going to do it with my own style, right? So... So you can do the same thing with new platforms right now. Like I said, LinkedIn, TikTok, some of those kind of things. Or if you're just a lurker on Instagram, maybe start creating content on Instagram, that kind of stuff, right? But looking at a new platform right now, it doesn't take that much time 
You can just take 15 or 20 minutes a day to scroll through, look at the discovery pages, this kind of stuff, see what's working for people, and then create something, right? And you eventually, you just gotta jump in and you just gotta start trying stuff and skin your knees a couple times, you know what I mean? Before you can ride the bike. All right, that's number 11. Okay, last idea for the quarantine marketing. By the way, if you're on the live right now, do me a favor and drop me a hashtag live, or later on if you're catching this as a replay, drop me a hashtag replay, I'm just trying to see See how people are. Uh, see how people are here. Um, and if you're if you're doing any of these ideas in your own business today, like I'd love to hear you know what you guys are doing or how you're implementing any of these ideas that we've been talking about over the last four or five days. All right, number twelve. All right, number twelve. I'm calling it double down. Right now, look. Oh, you're on the live right now, Lynn. Okay, so ultimately. You have things that are working for you in your business today and in your marketing, right? And what you can do is look at what's already working for you and double down on that, okay? You sometimes, don't be afraid to, don't, right now is not a time to pull back. Right now is a time to press forward, especially in what's already working, okay? Now, obviously, I'm saying my last suggestion was to learn a new platform, and then I'm saying double down on what's working. I understand there's some, and I'm not saying, you know, Go put all your basket in your your eggs into this new platform. I'm just simply saying, take 20, 30 minutes a day and actually learn a new platform and create content there and be present on that platform. Okay, but you have things that are working for you really well right now. I'll give you an example. Right now, for you know, with people that I'm working with on Retainer, it working really well is amazingly is um, our live events, right? And so, oh my shirt, uh, brokers with beards are the best comes from LoanTees.com. Yeah, check out LoanTees.com. It's where you get all your, you can up your mortgage swag. All right, so you, look at what's working, right? For us, live events are working. So I'm saying like, go all in on live events. Start hosting more of them. Start creating more value. You know, instead of just doing one live event at a title company now, start offering them into real estate offices where you'll come into a real estate office, teach a class, or you know, if you have a team, you know, you can have somebody on your team be able to take over that office and that kind of thing, right? And so just look at what's working for you and double down on what's already working. Okay, don't don't pull back and go too too afraid. You wanna you wanna double you wanna go in, right? On what's especially on what's working for you today. Okay. Now I'm usually I'm all about experimenting and trying new things, but what I'm saying is just look at your business and you can see, okay, you know what? My Monday cold calls that work amazingly well. I'm going, I'm going to double down on that. Or my live events that I'm doing every Thursday are, are you know, I'm going to double down on live events and I'm going to start doing them twice a month instead of every month or three times a month instead of once a month, right? Uh, or my database events. Obviously right now, you know, you can't, there's some things obviously, I understand right now there's like this weird period of a couple of weeks, but look at what's working for you, okay? If you're sending one database email per month, and you get X amount of referrals, what would happen if you sent two emails per month or four emails per month, right? What would happen if you, um, instead of only calling your database once a year, what would happen if you called them twice a year, right? This kind of thing. That's what I mean in terms of doubling down, right? You really look at where your actual business is coming from and then doubling down on on that aspect of it, of, of what's actually occurring, not what we want to occur, what we think is occurring, but actually just looking at the numbers and doubling down. Now, here's kind of a little bonus tip, okay, is this is if you're creating any kind of content, okay, if you're creating any kind of content, and same thing that I'm gonna do with, uh, like this is the same thing that I'm gonna ultimately do with this video right here, right? And with these videos that I'm creating here on Facebook, okay, so I'm just gonna show you this, and this really comes from kind of like a Gary Vee style. Now his aspect is to create 100 pieces of content a day. I don't think that's realistic for 99.99% of people. It's just a crazy number, right? But there are things that you can do to maximize what you're already creating, okay? So for example, let's say you're creating a video, okay? So you have this video right here. It can be this video right here. I'm, this is exactly what I'm gonna do with this video when I'm done with this full series, okay? Is I'm gonna, you're gonna shoot a video, now you've, you've got this piece of content that exists, okay? Now that video can be put onto a Facebook page. So again, not a, you know, not that my, you know, I'm on my profile right now, but ultimately it's gonna go onto a business page. And then it can also go over to a YouTube channel, right? And now I can keyword this video over for YouTube for depending on what I want people to find it for. 
And now I'm gonna have pieces of content that exist on both, both of those sites. Now the other thing that you can do is you can, you can take the long video, you can take the long videos and you can create snippets, right? And short clips of your long video. So if you're creating, say for example, once a week you created a video. Let's call this Monday right here. Monday, you shoot a video. Okay, you make a video on Monday and you're answering a common mortgage question or busting mortgage myths or answering common real estate questions or whatever your niche is, right? You're creating content that's not about you, it's, it's designed for the end user, right? Who's your ideal client and you create, you're creating content for that person, right? And you shoot that video on Monday, now you upload that video to Facebook, you upload the video to YouTube, and now you have content existing on both of those, both of those platforms, okay? Now what we can do is, let's just say on Tuesday, okay? On Tuesday, we can write a blog post. Now, when you're making a blog post, I'm assuming, like, let me know if on your website, do you have the ability to write blog posts on your website? Or is that, is that not a capability that you have today? When you're creating a blog post on your website, you're going to make it about the same content. It's going to have a similar title as your YouTube video. And we're going after the same kind of phrase or keyword search or, you know, ideally, so there's just one thing that we're looking for people to find this blog post for. Right? So we're gonna make a blog post, you're gonna write some words, it needs to have at least about 300 words inside of your blog post, and then at the very bottom of the blog, you're gonna embed the YouTube video, okay? It's pretty simple, when you look at YouTube, there's a little button that says share, and there's an embed code, and you can take that code and you can, especially if you have a WordPress site or anything that's easy to blog on, just drop that video in. Sometimes all you need is the YouTube link and the website will do it for you, do everything else for you or YouTube will just give you the code, it's called an embed code, E-M-B-E-D, right? And you're gonna make a blog with the video. Now, when you're, when you're putting the video on your blog post, it's important, again, you wanna put it at the bottom. That way people have to scroll down, they have to spend more time on the page, all of that helps with, with Google showing them that your page is relevant to that search phrase, okay? Then ideally, they go down to the very bottom of the blog and now they're gonna, re they're gonna watch the video. Now they're sitting on your webpage for a few minutes. They're also consuming your YouTube content. Um, now, they've, if you have the pixels and everything on your website, now you can be retargeting th that person because they visited your website. If you have video, you know, if you have YouTube retargeting in place, now you can retarget that person because they watched your YouTube video and Google knows who they are from that aspect, right? So you've got, now you've got retargeting going out in multiple places depending on which pixels that you have firing on your website. If you have Facebook and Google and something like ad roll or perfect audience where you can go and retarget across the whole internet, now you can literally be hitting those people everywhere they are, right? So now you've got the blog post on Tuesday and what you're gonna do is you're gonna share, you're gonna share that blog post link out onto your Facebook page, okay? All right, so what you can also do is you can put the blog post link above the video. So if you already have the video on Facebook, just go back, edit the post on your Facebook page and, and just add the blog post link there. And now you can take either one of these, either the link that you just put on your Facebook page or the one that has the video and you could run that as a Facebook ad if you want to. You could be able to get more people to watch the video. You can be able to drive traffic over to your website, which is important in the beginning whenever the blog first goes out, and you can be able to have content that's out there in your local market um, on Facebook keeping you relevant as well, okay? Now, what do you do? So on Wednesday, what you could do is, on Wednesday, you could go over to LinkedIn, and what's cool on LinkedIn is that you can create, you can create blogs there as well, or I think they call them articles, right? So on Wednesday, you're going to create a LinkedIn article, all right? Now, when you're making your LinkedIn article, you don't actually have to include all the content, all the information. You can just base it off of like a snippet of your blog. So put maybe the first paragraph or two paragraphs of the blog, and then just put a link to the blog post itself. So now somebody's gonna see it on LinkedIn. You have that piece of content on LinkedIn that people can watch, people can find. It's also searchable for Google. So if you're keywording it, right now you've got content there. And so really we're just, we're just leveraging that one piece of content into all these different places, right? Okay, 
Now on Thursday, hopefully you guys are still seeing that. Yeah, that looks good, right? Okay, on Thursday, uh, you're gonna email it, okay? So you're gonna take the same blog post that you have on your website that has the YouTube video. Now you're gonna email it out to your list and we're gonna try to drive traffic that way. All right, so just put a simple email. I'm assuming you're already emailing your list once a week, so you could attach this to that weekly email. Or if you're not emailing them every week, now this can be the email, right? This could be a piece of content that you're able to send out to your, to your list uh, once a week to your database and continue to stay relevant there. And also you're pulling people back into your retargeting every time, you know, because if they're coming back to your website, now they're firing back those pixels. And if you have, assuming you have easy, you know, some simple retargeting in place, you're going to be firing those pixels back off where you're cap capturing them again. Okay. Then, you know, that's pretty much, that's pretty much the things that you can do right there. I mean, obviously like on Friday, there's some other platforms. So, you know, you could do like um, Instagram, Twitter, right? You've got also uh, your personal Facebook profile. So you could be creating some more links. You can be looking at all your other social profiles. How can you put this same piece of content out? All you're doing, you're just leveraging that one, that one piece of content, you know? And all this is coming off of like a 20 minute video that you can shoot every single Monday. And then you can take that video and you can push it out to all these different platforms and create different pieces of content off of that one video. So you're not gonna think of stuff every single day. And then just imagine the amount of content if you actually committed to this process for any amount of time how much content you could be having online so that people can find you, right? This isn't gonna be, this particular strategy isn't gonna be like overnight, it's gonna double your business, right? But long-term, what happens is that people cannot compete with a content and with branding long-term, right? People can compete short-term because I can outspend you on paid ads or this kind of thing, but long-term, you can't compete with what this, what this kind of process does. So that's a little quick, uh, well, I mean, I guess it took five minutes, but that's a little bonus tip right there in terms of if you're creating any content, how can you be leveraging that piece of content out everywhere that you can get it, right? Everywhere you can get it. By the way, if you're on the live right now or you're cap catching the replay, I'm going to give away one, uh, one book pack, okay? It includes the loan officer strategy guide. It also includes the nine figure blueprint. And all you need to do is leave a comment, ask a question, something relevant to what we talked about today. And I'm going to pick one person to mail out the uh, book pack to you. Those books are both available on Amazon. But I'm going to pick somebody to win, win those here today. And yeah, if you're on the live right now, drop me a hashtag live. Drop a hashtag replay. Really appreciate you for tuning in. I'll do a quick recap right now of all the, all the ideas that we talked about um, over the whole... Let me take this thing out of here. Over the whole entire time, okay? So here you go. So number one was connection. Number two, attention. And number three was entertainment, right? This is all about because people are lacking things right now being stuck in their house, okay? Number four, omnipresent. Five, reviews. And six is certainty. You know, people, you need to be everywhere. Reviews, you, you cannot compete. There's, it doesn't matter what you say about yourself. It will never compete with somebody else saying it about you, right? It just isn't never going to be the same, okay? Six is certainty. People need that right now. Uh, let's see, seven was systems, eight was Zoom and be live, and nine was getting more juice out of what you already got going on, right? So you can do that. And you can catch all these videos are still on my profile. Just scroll back and you can find them all. And then today we talked about auditing your business. Um, we're looking at new platforms and, you know, doubling down on what's already working, right? So, man, I hope that this series was helpful for you. It's been awesome delivering it and helping you out. And uh, if there's something that you need, let us know. And again, if you don't have a great tribe, if you don't have somebody around you right now supporting you and rallying and making sure that your business is pressing forward, check out oneagentaway.com. Check out the Legion of Loan Officers and what we got going on inside. It's an amazing group and I'd love to invite you inside. And uh, yeah, like I said, if these videos helped you out, feel free to share them, tag your friends, that kind of thing. And appreciate you guys for tuning in live. See it.